Hello. Today I am uh, uh, continuing to go on my list of from my least favorite to most favorite Tarantino films, and today I my, <clears throat> and my number fifth uh, favorite uh, of his movies will probably be very uh, uh, have many people at least uh, disagree, and that's completely fine. Um, and that's just because, you know, uh, I don't know. I've really thought about all of this quite a bit, and I've, you know, having rewatched them all and thinking about it, and then going through my list and just seeing if some uh, stay the same or move up or down. And, uh, you know, as of now, um, this is where. Uh, I do put this film, so it may change at some point. Um, but as of now, my fifth uh, favorite uh, Quentin Tarantino movie is Pulp Fiction. There's the Blu-ray and the DVD, and of course, the Blu-ray again. Um, now, I do enjoy this movie. I think it's great. Um, it's fantastic from beginning to end. The story of how there's these different stories, but ultimately they all come together in the end. And, you know, that's just fantastic. Um, the acting is incredible. You know, you got one character really um, uh, that's in all of these uh, throughout the whole thing. Um, you know, John Travolta. It's Vincent Vega, and um, and Jules Winfield is Samuel L. Jackson. The first time Samuel L. Jackson has ever worked with Quentin Tarantino. Um, <clears throat> and you have Uma Thurman as Mia Wallace, the wife of uh, Marcellus Wallace, played by Bing Rames. Um, and uh, you know, Bing Rames is like a kind of like a like a gangster and a you know the big man and he. Vince Vega is in charge to, of taking his wife out because, um, you know, he's going to be out of town and wants somebody to just sort of enjoy themselves or, or be able to uh, help, help her enjoy herself. And um, we talk about this while they have to go and get <clears throat> a briefcase back for Marcellus. What is in this briefcase? We can only... Uh, guess because that's one of the things of this movie we don't know what's in the briefcase and Quentin Tarantino says you know uh, it's whatever you want that's what's in the briefcase it can be gold um, some say it's the Elvis suit from uh, True Romance um, <clears throat> of course a light bulb and sort of like a battery pack to ensure the light bulb would uh, be functional and to power it was the actual, <laughs> what was actually in the briefcase, but that's not as interesting, uh, honestly. Um, <clears throat> but it is uh, a very uh, fantastic film. I remember seeing it for the first time years ago, and um, my mother actually bought the DVD. I was home as a teenager, or also, and uh, she said, hey, have you seen Pulp Fiction? I'm like, eh, no. She just throws the movie at me. It was the first and only time she ever, like, threw something at me when I wasn't expecting it. So I'm like, okay, well. And I watched it, and I uh, really loved it. And, and I have enjoyed it over um, the years. But, of course, as I've seen all the Quentin Tarantino films, you know, this film is very loved, and I understand why. It's incredibly well made. The performances are excellent, um, other people in in this film um, are Harvey Keitel as the wolf, who, after uh, 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 getting the uh, briefcase for Marcellus Wallace and having to head back with somebody who was there um, with them, um, working with them, though it was was not present in the car prior to them arriving in the apartment, and they <coughs> take him with them. 
and they also kill everybody else in the apartment that wasn't supposed to be, um, you know, or like had a hand in this or something, or just at least there, like maybe wrong place, wrong time, or, you know, who knows, maybe they all knew about it, um, which seems like they do, um, or at least one does, <laughs> and makes you wonder if others knew somebody in the bathroom and he gets killed because you know of course they have to but that guy also had like a big revolver um and he uh and they're all in the car driving around and then uh, he uh the guy who they took with him they get shot in the face by uh Vincent, uh, and from there they have to go and go to Jules's friend Jimmy's place in order to uh, deal with this properly and have to go and uh, do all this before uh, Jimmy's wife you know, comes home, you know, because uh, that's not going to be uh, good for Jimmy, and so he. Uh, wants them out, but he, you know, he wants to help, but, you know, he, it, something like that's gonna really, uh, be a problem for him, and so there's a way to do, uh, do all this and get out of the place quickly, all right, but otherwise, then, um, that's where the wolf comes in, Harvey Keitel, he solves problems and helped and, um, helped them get everything they needed to get done. And um, from there, we uh, they have to wear different clothes and stuff because their clothes got all bloody. They also had to um, <clears throat> get uh, hosed off, and and that whole thing is very funny. It's very uh, just very well done. And then later they go and eat breakfast, and. Um, <laughs> That's where, you know, that's the very end, but also at the very beginning, because the entire film uh, bookends with um, Pumpkin and Honey Bunny, uh, Tim Roth and Amanda Plummer, and, um, which was the second time uh, Tim Roth has ever worked with Tarantino. And, um, interestingly enough, at one point, um, uh, when writing the script, Quentin Tarantino thought about, you know, Instead of Samuel L. Jackson and um, John Travolta, the film might actually star two Brits, and the lead of the film would actually be uh, Tim Roth as, uh, I believe, Vincent, and then Gary Oldman uh, as Jules. And uh, that'd be interesting. I, mean, I would have, of course, you know, the film is incredible and fantastic the way it is but it makes you just wonder I guess like what would the film have been like if this had been the the version that he went with and um, Tarantino actually wanted Michael Madsen to do um, or to play uh, Vincent first but he uh, was busy with Wyatt Earp at the time so he couldn't do it he did think of maybe a uh, Lawrence Fishburne as uh, Jules, but he had just gotten nominated for an Academy Award uh, for uh, uh, What's Love Got to Do With It, and is now a leading man. He's now finally the lead kind of guy, you know, which is something that people, you know, who act want to be. They want to be the leads, um, at least at some point. You know, if, if they don't want to ever have it be a consistent thing where they're the lead, they would at least want a decent opportunity to basically, at the at the very least, co-lead a movie. And so he did that, and he now gets to be the lead in movies for a good while. And Jules is like was you know, like has a supporting part. You know, Vincent's the lead, and. You know, he just got nominated for an Academy Award, so now his price is up. 
So there's all these things, and apparently uh, Lawrence Fishburne's people kind of convinced him not to do Pulp Fiction because of that. So, yeah. Um, but it's interesting to think how Tim Roth could have been uh, like one of the leading guys instead of somebody who's... You know, he, he's important because, you know, of how everything tr transpires throughout the whole thing. And then when you look at it chronologically, just how this, they, you know, they he and his girlfriend are going to rob this restaurant. Why? Because nobody would expect it. They're just going to really, like, take the cash from people, take their wallets. Um, and, uh, yeah. Eric Stoltz plays a drug dealer uh, who Vincent sees a couple times. Rosanna Arquette's uh, wife. And uh, Christopher Walken is a, shows up for only one scene. He uh, is there for uh, to giving a watch to a character Butch, played by Bruce Willis. He's an adult. And his girlfriend is Maria Dino Redis. Apologies, I'm not, I, again, sometimes I suck at uh, pronunciations. And uh, he is supposed to, um, you know, of course, throw a fight, but he doesn't, and so, and apparently the guy's dead. And just, all these things happen, and then, you know, uh, Christopher Walken gave uh, you know, him a gold watch that his father had when he was young, and that's like one of the very few things, like I guess, with his father's that he has, and so he, uh, uh, his girlfriend forgets about, um, forgets to pack that, and so he has to go and, uh, back to his apartment, and then he gets it, and, um, before he leaves, he goes to, uh, have Pop-Tarts, but then, well, <clears throat> Vincent's there, and, well, uh, things don't totally end well for Vincent, and then he goes to leave, and all seems good at that point. And, um, to an extent, at least, and then he, uh, he sees, uh, you know, Butch sees Marcellus, and Things don't transpire as hoped, and he hits him, and then he crashes his car. Gets his car crashed, and then afterwards, the uh, a, a chase happens, and uh, Marcellus is trying to shoot him, and then uh, Butch gets the upper hand, but they unfortunately uh, are in the wrong store. Stuff goes on that you know you you, you wouldn't want to ever uh, uh, you wouldn't want to it's just what happens to the two of them later is that's just like like real creepy uh, you know Peter Green is an end who's probably one of the best parts he is known for as being the villain in the mask. It's Dorian, and uh, he's a guy who's, um, <clears throat> he plays Zed, and uh, he and got his friend who runs the, uh, it's the, the, like, pawn shop, the place, and they like to do things in the back, and uh, what they do is uh, incredibly creepy. Marcellus is a, a very happy camper, uh, but uh, obviously, because what happens to him, I'm not going to say what, because you know, YouTube won't uh, appreciate that. But, you know, what, what happens to him isn't something that anybody would want to happen to them. And there's also this gimp who uh, uh, Bruce Willis sees and he just... tied to like a chair and then he breaks his binds and then he 
punches out the Gamp, who probably dies because he's like hanging there. And so, well, I guess that's it for the Gimp. And he's goes, he's free, he's gonna wave, but then he just can't because, you know, as much as he doesn't like Marcellus in that moment, obviously, he uh, can't let that uh, happen to him. He can't let what's going on just, you know, be that a one time thing or a possible continuous thing if uh, they keep him alive. And uh, he uh, runs back in, uh, or he doesn't run back, he just goes back and he looks around for like some weapons, like a, a baseball bat and a chainsaw, and then he uh, takes a sword, and then he goes and Kills the store order, uh, Maynard, I believe the dude's name was, and, uh, and, uh, you know, he wants Zed to get a gun, and he has, uh, put down, and, uh, Marcellus, uh, <laughs> apparently there's a shotgun in the room, <laughs> and, uh, he gets a hold of that, and then he shoots Zed in the, in the place you don't want to be shot in, uh, well, especially if you're a guy. And uh, after that, the two of them, there's like a part. Like, you know, all is basically square, but he just can't come back to L.A. And that's, like, understandable. He's just going to leave. Um, and, yeah. He, uh... The uh, the film is incredible, and of course that's all in like in basically chronological order. Um, of course, it's not in chronological order, which is one of the things that people love about this movie. How it just goes back and forth, and I understand that. That's really fantastic. Of course, it this kind of storytelling has been done before, but just not as. It's just the way Quentin Tarantino does it, like you know. Like uh, Tarantino says, you know, in books it happens quite a bit, but that doesn't really happen in a whole lot in movies. Um, and like it had happened in movies before, but you know, those movies weren't either as well received or weren't as well known for a time. Um, but when Pulp Fiction came out, people really loved that, and uh, you know, spot uh, so many imitators. And, um, and as I mentioned in Kill Bill, like, you know, for Fox Force 5, that pilot that sh uh, Mia Wallace did, um, seems to be like Kill Bill. And again, the two of them, uh, Quentin Tarantino and Uma Thurman, did uh, sort of like develop the character of uh, the bride for Kill Bill uh, during the making of this film, so... That's something that's really cool. And of course, um, you know, there's Jack Rabbit Slims and uh, $5 Shakes. And um, you can actually hear a, a little ad for $5 Shakes in Reservoir Dogs. But I'll tell you where that is <laughs> when I get to that film. Um, but um, yes, this is an incredible movie uh, all the way around. I really loved it. Um, I think it's fantastic. You know, ever since I saw it, and I still think it's fantastic, even now. Um, um, it's cool just how many people Quentin Tarantino has worked with um, since this film, and how he's also uh, worked with Harvey Keitel and Tim Roth. Both were in Reservoir Dogs, and also Steve Buscemi is in this film. He plays the guy when uh, Mia and Vincent go to Jack Rabbit Slims. He's their buddy Holly waiter. It took me a while to really notice that it's him, because, you know, the voice sounded similar, but it was, like, in the credits, like, I saw him, like, oh, that's who it was. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, it's really cool. He's sort of kept up with certain people, and, um, 
And this film, of course, uh, revived uh, John Travolta's career. It hadn't he hadn't had too many hits uh, after a while, and this really helped launch um, Samuel L. Jackson and Uma Thurman. Honestly, it's a fantastic film all the way around. Um, a lot of swearing, a lot of violence, and all that stuff that you expect from Quentin Tarantino. Um, but it's all good, I think. Um, so anyway, that is my um, overall thoughts on Pulp Fiction. Of course, I did just really talk about the overall plot, but that's just because, you know, this movie is just so good you know i think these top five films are so good I, you could just really like talk about the plots in general and there you go like it's just you know so many people have already seen this so it's like i, I don't need to just overall summarize the whole thing and yet what can i say that can't hasn't ever been said about this movie before so it's like i don't know and the music is excellent um fantastic uh, film, um, you know, and, and just the music complements it so well, and I, I just uh, I enjoy watching this film every so often. It's uh, incredible. Um, I'm sure so many of you do think this is the best film he has ever made, and that is completely fine. Or at the very least, maybe it's your favorite film. Maybe you think another movie he has made, maybe. Uh, his best for various reasons yet as your personal favorite you know this might be it and that's understandable so much to uh, love and enjoy with this film um, I uh, I hope this was fine and it wasn't too uh, boring you know I know I do kind of ramble but I do my best to make sure if I do ramble it's always on topic and it doesn't Develop, delve into something something somewhere else you know that's always a bit unfortunate when that happens I think um, but I do um, really um, I do love this film quite a bit and it's excellent from beginning to end so tell me what you think in the comments if you want and um, man Hope all of you have a great day. Hope all of you have a, you know, great week, weekend, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah. Take it easy and take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.